The famous statesman Hassan Bayazar made a great contribution to the establishment of Azerbaijan as a democratic and legal state. Despite the election of Ali Mardan Bey Topchubashov as the chairman of the parliament, Hassan Bayazar took all responsibility and fulfilled the duty of speaker. Because of that, Ali Mardan Bey Topchubashov stayed in France to introduce Azerbaijan to the world. Hassan Bayazar worked with great responsibility during the most difficult working days of the parliament of Azerbaijan. On 2nd February 1920, when he left the office, he was given a letter of application which was signed by all members of the parliament. Later, when the Bolsheviks invited Azerbaijan, he was in Georgia. The purpose of staying in Tbilisi was to organize a national resistance movement, save Azerbaijan from Bolshevism and free it from occupation. Hassan Bayarayev was born in Ganja in 1875. After receiving his secondary education at the Ganja Classical Gymnasium, he entered the medical faculty of Moscow University with the help of the famous millionaire Haji Zainal Abdin Tayyip. After finishing his studies in Moscow in 1901, Hassan Bayarai returned to Baku and first started working as a doctor at Haji Zainal Abdin Tayyip's textile factory and girls' school. At the same time, he worked in the state hospitals in Chomurchu Square, which later became known by his name. Since Hassanbay was connected to the Social Democrats during his first political activity, he was in close contact with the organization and worked hard as a member of the Humanity Organization. In 1906, the bureaus of the Defy Party created by Ahmed Bayaroglu were established in the regions. Hassanbay Arayev created the Bureau of Defy in Ganja and managed to gather Ganja patriots around him. Asambay was also engaged in journalistic activities. He translated the book Silk Sinif Girga with political content into the Azerbaijani language and published it at Geyret Printing House in Tbilisi. Asambay Arayev became one of the founders of the first medical society in Ganja. Together with Kudadat Bayrafibali, he established the medical society in 1940. Later, this medical society was called the Ganja Medical Society. Asambay was married to Khadija Hanum, who was originally from Ufa Turks, and she studied pedagogy at the Institute of Nojabal Girls in Petersburg. They had three daughters, Juzru, Kurshid, and Nazaket. As we know, Hassan Bay received his medical education in Moscow with the help of Zainal Abdin Tagiev, and upon his return, he worked as a doctor in Tagiev's factories. Khadija Abdurrahmanova came to Azerbaijan at Tagiev's invitation. He learned from a newspaper in St. Petersburg that Tagiev was inviting educated Muslim women to be teachers in a newly opened girls' school. Khadija Khan wrote a letter to Tagiev, and after receiving his consent, she came to Baku, where Khadija Hanum and Hassan Bey got to know each other. In 1904, they got married. They had three daughters. The eldest daughter, Khurshid, is my grandmother. Hassan Bey told his wife Khadija about the events that happened to him in 1901. Khurshid Abdullah was the great-granddaughter of Hassan Bey shares that event with us today. Hassan Bey went to a cafe with his friends after graduating from university. The friends met the prophet where, where by chance, who prophesied to everyone, and when it was Hassan Bey's turn, uh, the soothsayer referred it from a divination. After the great request of Hassan Bey and his friends, the woman foretold his future fate. He said that he would have three children. He was also waiting for a political rise, and at the age of 45, he would be killed. After that, Hassan Bey laughed and told him that I am a doctor. Man, what do I have to do with politics? Nevertheless, Hassan Bey didn't stop thinking about the fortune teller's words. He kept telling his wife not to hurt him because he would die at the age of 45. And so he was killed at the age of 45 in Tbilisi. <laughs> Starting from 1970, Hassan Bayarayev gave more importance to the political activity. In particular, after the February Burgess Revolution of 1970, Hassan Bayarayev's assistance was invaluable in gaining great influence among the people of the party was created by Nasif Bay Yusuf Bayarayev in Ganja. In April 1970, a Congress of Caucasian Muslims was convinced in Baku. 
and in May in Moscow. Speaking at both Congresses, Hassan Bayrab put forward the issue of granting autonomy to Azerbaijan within Russia. On February 10, 1980, representatives of the Caucasus in Russia met in Tiflis and created the Transcaucasian Sejm, the highest authority in the South Caucasus. On April 22 was declared the sovereignty of the South Caucasus. Hassan Bey, who was a member of the Muslim fraction in the Transcaucasian Sejm, was closely participating in all those events and expressed his views and opinions. Since the Transcaucasian Sejm and the government did not satisfy the national interests of the nationalities living in this area, it was dissolved on May 25 of that year. On May 27, 1980, an emergency meeting of the representatives of Azerbaijan was held in connection with the dissolution of the Transcaucasian Sejm. On May 28, 1980, the Republic of Azerbaijan, the first democratic republic in the East, was established after the dissolution of the Sejm. Ahmed Amin Rasulzadeh was elected as the chairman of the National Council, and Hassan Bayrayev and Miral Akbar Seydov were elected as the deputies of the chairman of the National Council. At the same meeting, the executive body of the National Council, consisting of nine members, was established, and Fatalhan Khoisky was elected as the chairman of the executive body. On May 28, 1980, the first meeting of the National Council was held under the leadership of Hassan Bey Arayev. At the meeting was mentioned and discussed Hassan Bey Arayev's information about recent events in Yelzavet, Volganja. Here was a talk about the telegram and the letter that was sent by Mehmed Amir Rasulzada from Batumi. Issues such as the dissolution of the same and the declaration of Georgia's independence as well as the situation in Azerbaijan were discussed at the meeting. On December 7, 1980, the opening ceremony of the Parliament of Azerbaijan took place. At the end of his opening speech, Ahmed Amir Rasulzada proposed to elect a chairman and a deputy chief of the parliament. Shafi Bey Rustam Bey nominated Elmar Dambay Topchibashov for the chairmanship and Hassan Bayrayev for the deputy position, and the proposal was accepted by all. On January 14, 1920, on the occasion of the recognition of Azerbaijan by the world states, festive events were held in Baku. On that day at half past one in the afternoon, there was a ceremonial meeting of the parliament. The parliament of Azerbaijan was very active during the leadership of Hassan Bayrayev as the deputy chairman of the parliament. Hassan Bey's great reputation allowed him to solve certain problems in state administration. Hassan Bayrayev did not only chair the parliament sessions, at the same time he supported the drafting of laws and was active in discussions. Hassan Bey worked tirelessly on bills that came from the Minister of Internal Affairs, Justice and Public Health. He participated in the development of these drafts, discussions and decisions. He had to work in difficult times because at that time there was a multi-party system. Even our enemy Armenians had 20 seats in the parliament. In such a chaotic situation, a great contribution was made to the adoption of these laws. Most of all, he thought about the Karabakh issue. He always brought this issue to the parliament for discussion. He said, a great attention to the creation of military forces. He played a big role in introducing the law in the field of health care. IDPs coming from different regions spread different diseases. Because they didn't have one place to live, they moved to different parts of Azerbaijan and this spread disease. Hassan Bey created 40, uh, 10 mobile hospitals to fight these diseases. The period of this political life was burdened with such urgent issues. Also after he left the position of Deputy Speaker of the Parliament due to his health problems, he continued to work as a member of the Parliament. After the occupation of April 1920, Hassan Bey was in Tbilisi. His goal was to initiate a national residence movement, save Azerbaijan from the Bolsheviks and free it from occupation. On June 13, 1920, he wrote a letter from Tbilisi to Amber Pasha, the commander of the Ottoman army, with great hope and excitement. At the same time, while he was in Tbilisi, Hassan Bey sent a letter to Nerman Nermonov too, that he wanted to return to Baku. Nermonov complained about it based on the situation. He emphasized the upcoming danger to Hassan Bey in Baku. 
Moreover, Nerimanov did not recommend him to stay in Tbilisi. After that, SMB was going to go to Turkey. He even bought a ticket and planned to go from Tbilisi to Batumi on July 20, and from there moved to Turkey by ship. On the evening of July 90, 1920, Hasan Bayagai went to meet his friends. While returning to his Georgian friend's house, where he was temporarily staying, he was shot on the back and killed by Armenian assassins in the area of Tbilisi State Opera and Ballet Theater, named after Zakaria Paliashvili. Hasan Bayagai is buried in the Tbilisi Botanical Garden in the pantheon of other figures, next to the grave of Fatal Khan Khorsky, who was killed a month ago. After the occupation of April 27, 1920, the terror perpetrated by Armenians against well-known social and political figures of Azerbaijan deeply shocked the people of Azerbaijan. Thus, the people who were killed after the occupation were well-known intellectuals and prominent statesmen of the Azerbaijani people. As a result of the wise policy of Haidar Aliyev, the founder of modern Azerbaijan, the great national leader, as well as the statehood strategy of Ilham Aliyev, the president of the Republic of Azerbaijan, who successfully conquered his past, the power of Azerbaijan in economic and military and all other fields continued to grow day by day. The Karabakh war, which started on September 27, 2020, and lasted for 44 days, resulted at the end of the third year's occupation and the restoration of the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. The great victory won under the leadership of the victorious commander-in-chief Ilham Aliyev was written in golden letters in the history of Azerbaijan. The people of Azerbaijan will never forget the heroes who sacrificed themselves for the motherland.